We arrived at 2024 and AI is reaching new levels. I can now finally create songs for my goldfish. Recreating an AI like that is too much for this video, but I'll show you how to make this cool effect though. And for that, we'll have to take a look at the bigger picture, because then you'll be able to see that it's rotated in a circle. For now, this is too much text, so let's start with one line. The text looks rotated, but if I do that, it will just spin around itself. And that's because by default, transforms happen on the center of the element. Now if we move that to the left, you'll already get a way better result. Now offset the text and we start to see some really nice results. Now in the original website, the rotation is based on the scroll position. But we don't have a scroll bar, so let's add one. If we put our songs in a container that is way bigger than the size of our screen, then we can scroll through it. Now if we had a container inside of it that fills the entire screen and sticks to the top of it, we can scroll while still seeing our content. Oh, and this text here is centered, by the way, because I used Flexbox to center it vertically. Now let's add in all the other text and position them absolutely so they all have the same starting point. We could determine the rotation value with CSS variables and plain CSS, but we'll have to animate based on scroll position using JavaScript later on, so I'm going to dive into JavaScript land right away. We need to decide how far we want to rotate each text element. Now, this can be changed to your preference, of course, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll say that the first song should not be rotated at all, the last song should be rotated at 180 degrees, and every other song somewhere in between. The percentage that each song should rotate is then 100% divided by the amount of songs. And now that we have that value, we can loop over all the songs and get how many percent of the 180 degrees each element should rotate, and calculate the final rotation based on that. Now in the browser you'll see that the text moved too far to the right, and that's because we added that offset at the beginning. But since we won't be able to see the rest of the text circle anyways, we can just move it entirely to the left. Alright, what's next? The scroll bar currently seems to do nothing, so let's add a scroll handler. Now we want to animate the rotation when the user scrolls, but how far? Well, that's actually based on the current scroll position. An actual pixel value on its own is not very useful for us, but since we know the height of the entire container, we can calculate the scroll progress inside of the container as a percentage. Now at the top that value should be 0, but if we scroll to the bottom, we'd expect it to be 100, but somehow it's not. Ah, the scroll y value is the y value of the top of the screen. So if we want to know when we reach the bottom, we have to subtract the current screen size from the container height. Now let me get that for loop to determine the rotation again. Let's move that inside this handler and subtract the specific amount from the rotation based on the current scroll position. We have the percentage value, so we just have to convert that to the 180 degrees again. Now currently it will exactly rotate based on the scroll position, which is not as smooth as in the example. But we can easily animate it though by transitioning the transform property. Now the original website has some placeholder songs above the first one that you cannot scroll to. Let's recreate that by adding a few extra songs with a skip class. I'll make them mostly transparent so it's clear that they are disabled. We have to take those elements into account for our calculations though. First, let's get the amount of songs to skip. Now because there are more songs, the rotation per song will be less. But we don't want that, so let's subtract the songs that should be skipped. We do want the skippable songs to rotate along though. So we should still start at the very first skippable song in our for loop, but now we don't start at 0 degrees anymore. Instead, we'll start at a negative angle by subtracting the rotation of the skippable songs. And that will then rotate them above the center. Now the only thing that's still missing is this little flag right here. I used inline CSS variables to set the flag and then used the before element to render it. Set the content to the specified flag and make sure to set the font family if you want the flags to look the same on all devices. Now the flag currently pushes the text to the right, so I need to position it absolutely. I would expect a small negative left value which shifted to the left, but it actually disappears. Which is because the text has a 40 view width padding on the left, so I'll just position it right before that. But we only want to show the flag for the song that's currently in the center. It's JavaScript time again. Now we could check if the rotation is between two values, but I feel like that's a little hacky and we actually got the scroll percentage, so let's use that and multiply it by the amount of songs. That means that 100% scroll percentage would return the last song, or well, we're talking about indexes here, so I guess we need to subtract one. And we should not start at zero, but at the first song that should not be skipped. I start to wonder how many people will follow all these calculations without having to rewind it. Please let me know in the comments. Now lastly, let's add an active class to the song in the middle and remove the active class from all the others. 
those others can be slightly less opaque so the current song pops out more. Oh and don't forget to smoothly show the flag for the active song and hide it for all the others. I've also added a click handler in the final version which scrolls you to the clicked song. You can check out the code for that in my github repo in the description if you want to know how I did it. Or you could check out one of my other videos where I recreate beautiful websites.